Hey everyone, Paulie here from Hard Drive Radio, and I'm very excited to be sitting down right now with Andrea Ferro and Christina Scabia of Lacuna Coil. Guys, thank you very much for coming to see me today. Thank you for having us. It's a pleasure. Thank you uh, for having we us. We had a really, really good time last night. Uh, you guys played two sold-out shows back-to-back at Gramercy Ballroom in New York City, and I, you know, from my perspective in the crowd, I feel like everyone was just having the night of their lives. What did it look like for you guys? Yeah, it kind of felt the same because we we noticed that we brought out a lot of the old songs, the classic Lacuna Coil songs or songs from the very early releases. So uh, you can tell that the people was waiting for those songs for a long time and they they sing along and they were focusing, but they also got crazy on the heavier stuff. So it was been everything we could ask from a show, you know, the the singing along, the the head banging, the going crazy, but also the the listening and enjoying and and feeling the music. Yeah, I got the same feeling and I got a lot of messages this morning from even from super old school fans. I mean, people that have been watching more than 80 shows of Laguna Coil told me that those were the best shows that they've ever witnessed because it was not really a show. It was a reunion with with friends, as I said, from the stage. Uh, You had a a very special guest with you out on this run as well, uh, Miss uh, Melissa Van Fleet. Um, tell me about uh, meeting her and, and how she got involved with the show. Well, it all started because Marco, uh, our bass player, produced a record, a record, and that's when we when we met her in Milano because they did all in in Milano. And when we thought about a piano version of the song, an, an acoustic part of the song in the in the 119 shows in show in New York, we immediately thought about her. So we asked her, and and she was super excited because she has been a lacuna coil fan so she was like oh i can't believe it and we had a great time we rehearsed for the first time the same day of the first show but everything went amazing absolutely i mean it was a very beautiful rendition i think everybody was really happy with it uh you know this this 119 show that you guys do this is actually kind of a continuation of an amazing show that you guys were able to pull off last year in london and you know tell us a little bit about putting that one together because it looked like it was a project (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we started six months earlier, wow. you know, because we, we had to really think about what was possible to do. So we had to speak with the circus people, see the budget, see the the performances that were actually possible, find the right venue where we could hang the all the structures and uh, think when, when, in between tours and everything else, when we could fit the rehearsal. The, uh, Marco has to rearrange a lot of the keyboards for the old songs because most of our previous record were recorded on analog on yeah. tape so uh, we couldn't we didn't have the files for the keyboards or the other arrangements so we had to you had to rearrange again from scratch some of the songs so go back and think what was this like <laughs> back in the day <laughs> and, and then rearrange it for one guitar because back in the days we had two guitars so um, it's been a lot of work a lot of work from graphic stuff uh, musical stuff uh, performances f- logistics you know renting the stuff we needed and find the right companies to work with we had to hire uh, a stage manager on purpose because the, of the coordination between the circus and us and in the end, when we finished that show, I think we f- felt so m- relieved. Really you know, so like relieved. It was just like we lost 10 years of our life in yeah, one because, day, I mean, you know. <laughs> Andy and I went to Bristol because the company is based in Bristol to perform like a couple of days before the rehearsal with Laguna Coil that mm. took two days because we've been able to, to, um, to keep the venue for the day before the show. But... Problem was, we did our own rehearsal with fire, and there is a part when they lift me up on a sort of a parachute a skirt, which was quite challenging, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you. And the real rehearsal with all the performance on stage was the same day of the show. Because the day before, we, we kind of rehearsed some of the songs, and they put all the stuff that they needed to, you know, for, for the perform for the actual uh, performer performers. But the real rehearsal, just to make sure that everything would have been perfect because they also filmed the show so we wanted to make sure that everything would have been perfect was the same afternoon of the show so we played two shows two complete shows in one day i could imagine that would be uh just between the anticipation and the and the work of having to do it must have been exhausting by the end of it but it it was great it was great 
And looking at the DVD, uh, it's we like, can wow, say that we did it. Ninety <laughs> percent of what was planned actually worked. So that was a big result. You know? That was going to be my follow-up. Was there <laughs> any ideas that you guys had? You're like, oh, we should try this, and then looking at the logistics of it, you're like, no, that's insane. It's no, not going to work. Everything went went perfectly. Yeah, we we had a couple, a couple of things, of things and but just like some like technical some timing things, things, things and nobody really noticed. Oh, okay. So ninety percent, I think, is a pretty good result considering that w there were enough time to rehearse everything. You know. And you know the the show was really a, a celebration of twenty years of Lacuna Coil as a band, and that's just an incredible legacy. And you know, going back into all the material, looking putting together that set list, uh, digging back into all the old stuff. Were there any uh, like surprises or just songs like you might have forgotten about? Like, oh my God, I remember this song. We should play this song again. Like, how did you? put that playlist together because I'm sure that was it was fun. difficult because I remember when we s first selected uh, some song from each release we ended up having almost a hundred songs you know so say we can't we can play a hundred songs so we have to bring it down to I think it was 25 or something mm -hmm. like that it's two and something two hours and something of music so it was very difficult but we had also to think with the uh, logic as i say some of the tracks was just not possible to reproduce in a quick way because we had to uh, maybe reverse all the tapes into digital so it was something too complicated to do so we had to to choose also the songs that were actually possible to to change quickly you know and to adapt to the what we needed to do and then we had some breaks in between to allow the performance to change so marco had to wrote some instrumental stuff just to yeah. feel the break to to don't leave the stage empty with no sound or while they were building the structures or or they were getting changed so there's been a lot of things to to, to take care of you know but, but it was really really fun in the end and there are some classics that you can't get rid of mm -hmm. so when you start putting down a set list it's like okay you can skip heaven's a lie on on 20 years anniversary you can skip swamped you can skip this and that so the space is limited for yeah. the other songs I can imagine it's difficult to kind of, you know, please everybody, but I feel like you guys did a, a really tight job. Oh, and yeah, there will always be someone yeah. just like, oh, I hope tonight you're going to play this song. And it's like, oops. Like the deepest <laughs> we track played it ever. for months, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not tonight. Uh, you know, so this is all on a DVD that's out now that people can pick up. And, you know, I, I, I really encourage people to do because just the, the, the visuals of the show itself is just completely stunning, you guys really did an amazing job. I can't imagine the work that went into putting something like that, but I understand the feeling of having pulled it off. Do you think you'd ever do anything like it again? Um, well, if there is a chance, I mean, not another 119 show. I mean, that was right. that special show. Maybe something, something else. It was challenging because it was also the first time for us to have someone else on stage with us mm -hmm. because, of course, we've been playing so many shows so we're used to each other's presence we know that everyone has his own space we know how to move there are some movements that you reproduce and you don't even know that you do them all the time so we know each other so well but having someone uh, filling your space it was like oh god i can't do this way because there's the aerial girl oh sh where can i go so it was challenging i can imagine um but I mean, I guess that's that's what the rehearsals are for, right? <laughs> yeah, but I, I think it, it pushed us also to maybe make the normal show a bit more rich. Mm. So we're thinking for the next record cycle to add something. Obviously, it won't be the same kind of production because it's too expensive. Yeah. But but obviously, we will try to make the show even bigger if possible, you know. But if, if we get a nice offer, nice chance, nice location, we can definitely do something like that again. Now, the great thing about this show is that there's also uh, a book that came out recently, Nothing yes. Stands in Our Way, looking at the 20-year history of Lacuna Coil as a band. And there's just so many, like, just great stories from you guys and pictures in this book. And, you know, I want to know, putting it together, like, who's the archivist of the band? Who had all these photos? That was another <laughs> huge project because can you imagine, I mean, back in 98, there were no yeah. smartphones or, like, great cameras or so. Uh, all we had were printed pictures. Most of them were super blurry, so we couldn't really publish them. So it, it was it took it took months just to search for the special material, mm. as at least in the very beginning of our career. But uh, of course, we collected a lot of cool stuff just because everything was new for us. So you know, the first flyers, the first times where you read your names, so just like Lacuna Coil are gonna play here. We collected a lot of stuff and. and and that's why you know we made this 
beautiful photographic book with a lot of anecdotes telling the story of Lacuna Coil because a lot of people didn't really know them, yeah. know it, and they asked us yeah, to do yeah. it. I think in the end, to to have the book ready, it was almost as tough as having an album ready. You know, we it felt like same kind of process you know at the same time the same uh, effort so it was more difficult than we thought in the beginning i think probably the big the biggest work was to put the caption under each picture mm. because that is the problem you have to put you know pictures in a specific way just for the uh, for the layout of the page so we had to pick them up and just like no uh, this is wrong no this is wrong no you have to put it the here and that was that required a lot of work so I, I can imagine, you know, are you putting this book together at the same time as you guys are putting together the 119 show? Because I can um, imagine no. that's an incredible workload. <laughs> that might be too much. No, but there was probably something else going on because yeah, there was always something trying. So I remember it was a hectic time for sure yeah. in the past couple of years. <laughs> I can imagine now these days where you guys are just working on the new album, it must be like a relief. Like, oh, good, we just <laughs> have to make an album now. We just <laughs> have to make a record, yeah. yeah. yeah no, it's not still really. A, a lot of, it's still a lot <laughs> of work really, because really you have stressful. the photos, the hard work, and, uh, and the videos to be ready. So it's still a lot of work. It's always stressful. It's, it's still a job, you know, even if we love what we do and it's hard to call it a job because it's our passion. You still have deadlines and you still have to do a lot of things. But it's a fun job. Oh, yeah, it yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're here with Lacuna Coil. We're talking about uh, the 119 show and the new DVD and the book. And uh, we'll be right back and talk a little more about this upcoming album. 